That's yours, sir. I think so. Well, the name is? Royce. Sign here, please. Uh, motor car, is it? Yes. Holy Moses. Well, come on, let's give him a push. Conditions. I should be boiled alive in it. Back axles grind, the gears howl. Sounds like an avalanche of tea trays coming along. But you're all right. Yes. Right. Back to work, everyone. Come on. Come along. It's not eight o'clock yet. Come along. Make it work. It's second hand. What do you expect? Second hand and French. Will you look at this in here? I mean, how can people sell such junk to the public? You bought it. More fool me. Fred, listen, something important. Well, I suppose I can do something with it. You're not to take on any more. No, just get it right, that's the all. The doctor said you would have a motor car to get you out more to relax. It will get me out, but first I must get Fred, it right. we do not make motor cars. We make electrical goods. At least we're trying to. And you're too valuable to crack up again. Have you eaten today? I can't remember. Oh, my goodness. Look how this flywheel's fixed. That's appalling. Uh... Mr. Clermont, sir? Yes. It's, uh, it's eight o'clock, sir. That's fast. Now, come along, everybody. Back to it. Now we've agreed to a 70-hour week. You must play fair with us. Look at this. Holy Moses. Right. Good night, Good night Mr. Sir. Clermont, sir. Good night. Good night, Good night sir. sir. Fred, listen. It's urgent. I must talk to you. Oh, my godfathers! Criminal! But what did Ernest Claremont say? That we were going to have to lay off three more lads again on Friday. Oh, that's terrible. What will they do? Well, this depression, who knows? It's the South African War. It's affected everyone. And all the undercutting. Oh, please, eat something, dear. People are buying these damn cheap dynamos from America. Ours may be expensive, but they last longer, and they're far better quality. Well, you mustn't worry, dear. It will all come right in the end, I feel sure. Yes. So how'd you get it to go again, Uncle? The motor. Changed the commutator around, put a new one in, made it myself. Then could you take me to school a bit tomorrow? What? Oh, please, Uncle, please, please. Violet, yes. you shall do no such thing. And it's way past your bedtime, now run along. Oh, Auntie. Straight upstairs, isn't it? Go along, Vi. Good night, Uncle. Good night, Auntie. And don't forget your prayers, child. I suppose it is safe out there, dear. Hmm? Oh, one hears such dreadful things about motors. It, it couldn't explode or anything. What are you doing? Mending the Sunday school hymn books, dear. Oh. How bad is it? The firm. I can't see what's to do. Ernest wants me to turn out a cheaper product. Ah, but you won't. Well, what's the damn point?
I have a great love for you, Frederick, but... But? Strong language is unnecessary. I'm oh, sorry. You'll kill yourself. That's my lookout. Not at all of us depending on you, it isn't. Six o'clock in the morning. How long have you been at that? I'm going to make one of these. You what? These things. A motor car? Aye. But you detest them. We've got to do something to save us from the workhouse. Oh, no, Fred, you can't. Listen, the articles of the company, for one thing, they don't allow it. And for another? Well, the shareholders, what about the shareholders? What about them? Well, they must be consulted. Besides, what do you know about motor cars? If I can't do better than that. Eric, drop what you're on and help me here. Stand there. Take this pad and edit with a date. What is the date? The 4th. Right, 4th January, 1903. De Coville motor car. Now, as I take each piece out, number it and sketch it. And measurements. Write down the measurements as I call them. We're taking this thing to bits, piece by piece, all right? Right, sir. One automatic inlet valve. Two and two-fifth inches. And if you do make one, how do you propose to sell it? Mr. Rolls? Mr. Rose, have you seen it? It's under the panel. No, thank you. Rose, yes. What on earth are you doing? Lady Wharton is here for her driving lesson. Oh Lord, I'd forgotten. We've got to stop selling these machines, you know. Two years ago, they were at least reliable. Now look, Hanards are out of date anyway. They will not march with the times. And we know that. I was drop the agency and sell what instead. Sales are falling badly enough without that. No, we can't sell these anymore. Find something else. There are little firms springing up all over Europe now. People are realizing the possibilities of the motor car. One of them must come up with something good. Sheer unreliability is the trouble. All those breakdowns. This week's complaints. Oh, people will not learn about motor cars. What do they do when our machine breaks down, they ask? Pathetic. <coughs> what do you tell them? Wire us and walk. They think I'm being funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a sobering thought, though, that we're still the most reliable garage in London. There's, uh, by the way, an automobile uh, general meeting on Wednesday to discuss police persecution. Can't make it, racing. Yeah, and uh, the Self-Propelled Traffic Association are holding a motor gym corner in Richmond Park on May the 14th. They ask if you'll speak and present the prize. Preaching to the converted. Will you go? If I'm free. Why are you in town this weekend? Ballooning and hurling him. Oh, pity. My wife wondered if you might uh, look in for luncheon on Sunday. Well, if I balloon over your house, tell her I'll look down. Ha, <laughs> 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 Yes, yes, I'll drop your little girl some humbucks. Twelve driving lessons every time one sells a car is going to send me to an early grave. I shall buy a new balloon. That'll me. You don't seem to realize just how critical our finances are. We could survive but for your ballooning and motor racing and things. Do you know what your tire bill alone was last month? 120 pounds. I run this firm to pay for all that. Am I well, possible? Very sharp. Good. Well, have you seen the bank balance this week? Dirty and unsafe. People buy them. Oh, oh, people, dear. You mean the duchesses? If you are going to convert England to the motorised autocar, then you must first convert the influential and the wealthy. And they are wedded through long centuries to the grace and beauty of the horse. This is what you have to replace. Yes, Mother, I know. Well, you do not seem to be doing much about it. The electric broom can only go at five miles an hour. Oh, child. That concerns you because you are a great scorcher. Charlie Rose, they say. He's reached 28 miles an hour. Well, you must make other people concerned or ruin will follow. Yes, yes. The bar's being very decent about that. How is your overdraft? Five figures? The 
Prince of Wales keeps weekending with us with his staff of 50. The King may visit in the spring. As your father says, we cannot afford to keep C.S. Rolls and Company and the royal family. There is a limit, my dear boy. You need something that glides, Charles. Will you consider the electric broom? No future in them. People wouldn't agree. Petroleum spirit is for the middle classes. Think about it. I was talking to Edmonds at the Automobile Club yesterday. He's got shares in a company in Manchester, Royce Limited. They're making a car. They're electrical. Oh, are they? Yes, make dynamos. Electric carriage, that's what that would be. Oh, have you seen this? Look. The steam chariot of Chelmsford. What a monster. Harabellino. And you see these every day in Hyde Park, belching out great clouds of black smoke. Chauve has to stop every few miles to shovel in the coals. And what are they asking for? 400. <sighs> ah! Do you know what I want above all else? It's to sell a really good car with my name on it. So that it would become a household word like Broadwood or Steinway on pianos, Chubb on safes. Cheddar on cheese. Absolutely. What? Ha! <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Oh, I know it is. A foremost motoring pioneer in England at last gives his considered blessing to the perfect motor. Let it sell by the score. If we found one. Assuming that, yes. Mr. Royce tests engine number 15196. Uh, Mr. Royce here, it's, uh, it's two o'clock in the morning. Can we go home? Hmm? of December 1903. Two and three quarter hours time. 110 volts, 30 amps, race to 120 volts, 45. Fred? Fred, that was Minnie again. On the telephone? Yes. Damn waste of money. She's very worried about you. She says you haven't been home for four nights. Fred, you'll crack up again. Eric, you finished? Finished, sir. Bill? Water and petrol, sir. Right. Fresh page in the logbook. Fresh page, sir. Head it. Testing of completed car. And the date. What is the date? April the 1st, sir. Hell, that's not, is it? Afraid so, sir. Put March the 31st. <laughs> <laughs> March the 31st, 1904.
How's he a spin in the country, Eric? That'll be marvellous, sir. Watch them bloody dials, then. What about you, Ernest? I'll follow. In your quadricycle? For when you break down. Are we going into the motor business, then, sir? If we can find someone who wants them. You know that uh, Manchester Electrical Company that made a car? Yeah. It's a petrol car. Oh? Hmm, sounds interesting. Shouldn't we send someone to have a look? Oh, tell them to bring it down here. I had a letter from the Honourable C.S. Rowles. The noble scorcher? From his manager, at any rate. He wants you to take one of these down for him to have a look at. I'm too busy. Uh, seen the bank statement? Worth the trip. You never know. If he wants to see it, let him come up here. Mr. Royce asks if you can come up there. Royce? The Royce car. Oh, yes, the electrical one. Yeah. But it's petrol. Sounds interesting. What sort of engine? His own, a two-cylinder. Two? No good. Rattling old bone shakers. Edmonds has ridden in it. It's smooth and silent, he says. It glides. Mr. Rolls. Mr. Royce. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Kind of you to make the trip. No, I happen to be this way, and you keep on writing to us, so I thought... Yeah, come and have something to eat. Or would you like to see the motor first? No, thank you. I'm in no hurry. You motored up? Came up by train, actually. Really? Less Majesty. Hmm. Then what will you have? It's very good food here. No, I'm not a great eater. Oh, nor me. Do they have a salad? The hors d'oeuvre is free. The very it. Two hors d'oeuvre. Uh, yes, sir. And to follow? Nothing to follow. Oh, yes, just a minute. Something to drink. I don't drink. No, me neither. Two glasses of water. I have a personal dislike of two-cylinder cars. Mine is a two-cylinder. That's why I mention it. Why is that, Mr. Rolls? Well, they must, by their nature, rattle and bang. And that's no use to me, not for the clientele I deal with. Duchesses? Yes. Do you have many duchesses? hordes of them. And they won't buy the appalling contraptions for sale at the moment. You agree they're appalling? An absolute scandal. There are very few motoring men in what is known as a good social position. But you are one. So my contacts are extensive. I taught the Prince of Wales to drive, you know. And I have driven the King. What experience of motor cars have you had? No, oh, none compared with you. Though I've followed your battle for the cause these many years. Oh, yes, the cause. Against the stupidity of the law. And the conservatism of the influential class is quite so. Just as long as you don't think of me as a noble scorcher. Do they call you that? We're an incredible country, you know. France has taken the motor car to her heart and benefited beyond her dreams, but England... A disgrace. You know, I was once prosecuted for not having a man with a red flag walking in front of me. And for furious driving. How fast was that? 13 miles an hour. That's England for you. A nation of horse worshippers. Absolutely. I mean, you can't control them. A motor at 20 is on a better control than a handsome at 10. And do you know 240 tonnes of horse manure has to be cleaned up in the West End alone every day of the year? And the cruelty those poor beasts have to suffer to force them to 15 miles an hour. I'm a member of the, the Church of England Society for the Promotion of Kindness to Animals, you know? At least they allow motors to go at 20 nowadays. Not if they can help it. England needs changing. Yes. Are you sure you won't have anything else? No, no. People eat far too much. No, I do agree. Two light salads a day is more than sufficient. I'm a member of the Food Reform Association, you know. There is nothing more appalling than those great breakfasts that go on in our homes. Those great groaning breakfasts of porridge, cream, eggs, ham, bacon, sausages, kidneys, kedgeree, cold tarnigan. Often I had only one slice of bread in warm milk the whole day. Yes, yes, quite so. My wife allows me two slices now, though. Mm. 
Well, uh, now you're up here, will you see the car? I'm up here. I don't think we owe them anything, do we? Is this it? This is it. It's a gladiator on all days. It's a Royce. Funny little thing. That's what my wife says. Shall I start her? If you please. What's the matter? What? Won't she start? She's going. Shall we petrolize? How did you achieve the quiet? Horse sense. An inappropriate term, if I may say so. How many of these could you make? Well, how many do you want? Say 20? I think we might manage that. You build the chassis, we'll add the bodywork. We may suggest some modifications. Of course. One point. You're unknown, I'm known. I think we should call the motor by both our names. How do you mean? Hyphenated. It's a sales point. You'd have no objection. I don't think so. And Royce Roll sounds rather good. Actually, I was thinking of a different arrangement. Royce Rolls is nice on the tongue. Not so easy as Rolls Royce. I'll toss you for it. But it still will compromise. Alphabetical order, what? Manager up to discuss details. We shall look forward to it, Mr. Rolls. I hope we can come to some agreement. I feel sure of it. I have found the greatest motor engineer in the world. There was an old man of Darjeeling who travelled from London to Ealing. A note on the door said, don't spit on the floor. So he carefully spat on the ceiling. <laughs> I see no point in hiding the fact that we see our financial salvation in you. And unless I'm mistaken, you may go to the wall as well, but for us. That's very blunt. Yes. What do you know about affairs? Empty benches. And the Americans are undercutting everyone. You're after something. Correct. Speak up, then. We've sold every single car you've supplied to date, all 14 of them. Hot cakes. As Mr. Rowell says, it's a brilliant car, but unless we can have a lot more, it's not worth it commercially. Not worth what? Undertaking a major sales campaign, getting the car known. We've half killed ourselves producing those. It's only been a few weeks and we're working 18-hour days. Mr. Royce's health broke down totally last year from overwork. Couldn't you delegate? No. Well, that's it, you see. If you insist on testing every single part of every single car yourself, running each bit on the bench for days, how can you become commercial? That's my worry. Ours too, now. We haven't the room or the staff. You transfer them off your electrical work. What? That's what we started with. That's what we've done for 14 years. All the more reason. Couldn't you chuck the electrical side altogether and use the space for cars? No, we could not. 
There's no future in electricity, you know. What? That's just my opinion. What do you mean, no future in electricity? Gentlemen, we are getting off the point. Have you any further requests? Oh, yes. Can you make us some 15 horsepower three cylinders, 20 horsepower four cylinders, and 30 horsepower six cylinders? In addition to an increased output on what you're already taking? Yes. If you standardize the parts, you can make two, three, four, and six cylinders from the same basic design. We'd also like some motors to show for the Paris Salon. What sort? Four and six cylinders, actually. But you've only just asked for them. That's right. When is the Paris Salon? December. Moses. Four months design, build, and deliver. The best car in the world. All right. You'll delegate. You'll have your cars. Thank you. <clears throat> but it's still only a sideline to you. <coughs> what is? The Royce car. The Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce. It's only one of half a dozen brands you sell. Correct. Well, you must make it more prominent. We intend to. We rented two motors for the 1905 Tourist Trophy of Antonio Isle of Man. I'll drive one, Captain Northy of our staff will drive the other. I'm the best racing driver in the world. And I win it in a Rolls Royce car. I see. It's likely to be a most publicized event. Well, that seems satisfactory. Why the Isle of Man? The only place where you can close the roads for racing without special act of parliament. We'd like you to prepare a specially light version of the 20 horsepower motor for the race. Two models early next year. Nothing else, I suppose. No, not at present. Oh, good. I have here a copy of the draft agreement between us. That Deleuze drew up. I like this new Grecian radiator. Yes. Having included the other points you wanted as well, the decorations. No, the style is a better word. The style's in the engine. Yes, and we must reflect it in the exterior. Spit and polish. Those points also. Number 14 nozzle onto the Longmar carburetor. Crankshaft. Bolted on balance weights. Huh. Your ideas. Don't mistake my dilettante manner. My God, you've got a nerve. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10 nozzle you'll need, though. <laughs> if you say so. You up for the weekend? Yes. Come to tea Sunday. Thank you. I shall be working, of course. Society is shallow. Self-indulgent, stupid. Not worth a thousandth part of the money it spends trying to amuse itself. Men change their clothes too many times, the women wear too many jewels, and everyone eats far too much. No intelligent person could survive the dreary round of weekending house parties. Even the king. The king grows bored. I thought he loved the fast set. He drums his fingers on the arm of the chair. Boredom. Boredom. All that must change. I have turned my back on it all to explore the unknown, the limits. I met the Wright brothers once. Yeah, playing pioneers, you know that. Bunk. What? Flying is just not possible. But they've done it, they've flown. A 30 yard hop. Great Scott, it's a start! I spent half my life ballooning, I can tell you, and I... We shall stick to one thing, though, won't we? I mean, I know you're a famous balloonist, We but... cannot divide it up. We are all part of the whole thing. Ballooning, bicycling, motoring, flying... Look! We're hanging on by our fingernails, you and us, and scores of men depending on us, with no other means of livelihood, and there's a slump. You've never known what it's like to have to... What God gives and what we take, tis a gift for Jesus' sake. Be the meal of beans or peas, God be thanked for those and these. Have we flesh or have we fish, all are fragments from his dish. He his church save and the king, and make them ever flourishing. Amen. 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 <gasps> oh, I do wish you wouldn't bring these things into the parlor, Fred. Ah, oh, sorry, yes. Bad enough. You're spending the entire weekend under the car without. You've achieved a miracle, Mr. Rose, getting him to go for a walk. Normally he works the entire weekend. 
No relaxation at all? Oh, gardening in the middle of the night. I'm fixing an electrical lamp on a pole out in the garden. I garden while the rest of you sleep. When do you sleep? I don't. Oh, you do, Uncle. Well, sometimes, perhaps. Frederick, stop it. Sunday tea. Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. Oh, do sit down, Mr. Rose. And uh, have some Battenberg. Yes. Yes, thank you. Oh, I'm that hungry I could eat a boiled baby with the measles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Violet, that's enough. And just look at your hands. Go and wash them immediately. Yes, Auntie. Have you seen this trembler coil? No. You live in London, Mr. Rose. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, we have a house in Kensington. Um, and a place near Marmoth with some land. That's for weekends. How much land? Oh, about 5,000 acres, I believe. Servants. Fred. I want to show you something on the way back. This is it. What? Well, get out. I'd run along there. I don't understand. Bird scaring. Sixpence a week. I had no coat. And I was ten. Hey? Empty the tea leaves, sir. How many times have you used them? Twice. Use them again. Be careful with that petrol. It's almost a chilling a gallon. Do it again. What's that, Eric? Oh, it's for Mr. Table's dashboard, sir. He says you've used his car so much for experiments that uh, he gets embarrassed whenever he's with a client and it breaks down. If the car breaks down, please don't ask a lot of silly questions. <laughs> Make it lighter. I haven't got an alloy, sir. Invent one. What do you make of Royce? What about him? He's brilliant, isn't he? Yes. He came out from nothing, you know. He did all himself. Father a drunk. Selling newspapers on street corners at the age of nine, that sort of thing. Careful of this, Ben. You took it too fast. We're rehearsing for a motor trial. So far, your score has been three chickens, two dogs, a governess cart, and a sucking pig. In the way. England will not accept the car if you go around slaughtering the English. We're still their dogs. Gear ratio is wrong. Why, Royce? We'll make the gearing 14 and 3 quarters, 26 and a half, 36, 50.4. You don't deserve it. Baker? You don't deserve it. Cox? You don't deserve it. Apprentices. <clears throat> Beats me what they want Saturday afternoon off for. Football. Football? Waste of time. They have Christmas Day off after all. Mm. Ah, thank you. Oh, just a minute. Wait a moment, you. From Mr. Rolls. 
Right, and back to your benches. There's work to be done. Speed is what'll hit the headlines. Chance to excel with everyone watching. Reliability, performance, far more important. You're dull. Dull like Royce. No spirit of adventure. Hope to God I never reach 40. Why do you do it? Racing? Cars. Play the cars. I love them. You can't love an inanimate object. <laughs> can't you? Not love. Perhaps obsession. Things have got to be changed. My mother's been on me about marriage again. Don't. No? Marry in haste. Royce's marriage must have looked like the promised land at one stage, too. He loves children. He'd have loved the son. Didn't he have any? No children at all, I mean, even born? Nothing. Why are you not working? I am. You're simply idling about. Mr. Rose doesn't pay you for that. Where is he? He's not here. I can see that for myself. He has not been home for days. Lady Langattock? Yes. My name's Royce. Oh, yes, the mechanician. My son has mentioned you. He's in the Isle of Man taking part in the tourist trophy. I'm down here fixing this for him. <laughs> A competition. What is that? It's the clutch assembly of the Light 20, the type of car he's using. Charles understands these things. His father, Lord Langattock, had a great deal of trouble with the clutch and gears on his motors. Uh, they are the parts that are used for climbing hills, are they not? Oh, that's right, yes. We had a very steep hill outside our country house in Monmouthshire. Our motors could not negotiate it. Seemingly, it was too steep for our gears. But did you solve the problem? Oh, yes. We had the hill flattened. Ask Mr. Rose to telephone me when he gets back, will you, Royce? Our telephone was installed today. The number is Knightsbridge 3. Do you think he drives too fast? Yes. There was a motor accident in Knightsbridge this morning. A man was killed. There were four people killed in Colchester last week. A motor went out of control straight into a crowd. Two of them children. You have children? An adopted daughter, my wife's niece. Let us both try to restrain him, Royce. I fear for him. Yes. Well, at least Captain Northey came second in one of our cars. That is not the point. It is, as far as our publicity is concerned. I should have come first. And I would have done if my machine hadn't broken down within the first hundred yards. And whose fault was that? There were loose nuts at the bottom of the gearbox which must have been put in through the hole at the top. Snap the gear wheels. Sabotage! This sort of thing happens often enough in France, but I hardly thought it could occur in this country. And you issued a public statement to that effect? Which the judges refused to accept. I did read in one of the newspapers that you attacked the winner. Well, he cheated. His silence came adrift during the race and he, he drove round dragging it behind him. Oh, That's against mistaken. ACGBI regulations. Biased. Those judges are biased. What do they know about a motor car anyway? You can't get loose nuts into that gearbox. Well, then it must have been the gearbox itself. Well, there's nothing wrong with the gearbox. It's the way you handle it. Don't you tell me how to change gears. I have owned a motor car since I was an undergraduate ten years ago, and that was one of the first four motor cars in England. I won the Thousand Miles Trial in 1900, and I've won more awards than any other driver in the world, gentleman or professional, for ten years, while you... <laughs> you you've, you've been barely at it in 12 months. The way you change gears is something chronic. I think we should concentrate on deciding what publicity we should seek next. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I've already entered for next year's TT. Not with that model. <laughs> Nothing so adventurous as a new model on the way, is there? As you well know, there are two more on the way. The V8 and the legal limit. Though neither is exactly... <laughs> the, the legal limit? The legal limit? Oh, well, there's a, a dull, miserable concession to the Mrs. Grundys. A car which can't exceed a speed limit of 20 miles an hour, no matter what. There's pandering to the bigots. Can we decide if there's anything else we can do? Nothing. I've done what I can. Let down by mechanician. Mr. Rolls, how do you suggest we should celebrate Captain Northey's success? A public presentation? A champagne dinner? Oh. 
That's better. You're a rotten sport. You can't talk business with him in this state. But we must bring up Mr. Briggs' idea, though, amalgamating the two companies. I mean, put it to him. I'm not amalgamating with that arrogant bastard. The little Kaiser, they call him. I can see why. But Mr. Briggs's financial sense is impeccable. We'd be forced to ignore anything he advises. You think I am going to celebrate one of my cars coming safe? Our cars. My cars! It was a roll. I designed it. You wouldn't have got anywhere but for me who incorporated all my best ideas. Who made it in the first place? They call them roses. They call them roses. Our biggest shareholder has suggested we amalgamate our two companies, form a new one, Rolls-Royce Limited. What do you think of that? I think it's a perfectly hideous idea. I entirely agree. He must be mad. That's what I told him. <laughs> I think I would have given up the agency for these cars of yours anyway. Oh, good. I've been approached by other retailers. What? Who? <laughs> ah, no. We have the sole selling rights. My company. I thought you were giving them up. Selling them? I'll sell them. You give me 10% and then I'll tell you. Well, why did... Why did Briggs suggest amalgamation anyway? You've got to realise that we're on the verge of bankruptcy. I have the distinct impression that you're not far behind. Mr Briggs says go public, raise capital on the grounds of amalgamation. Your fiasco on the Isle of Man cost us both a fortune. Fiasco? Well, what else would you call it? We were a laughing stock. Suppose we let ourselves out. A cold place, this. Each member of the family has his own flat in it, as you know. Cold family? To each other as well. Two parents, four children, no real warmth to them. There is to Charlie. Not really. Uh. Disgusting, Sherry. It's watered. Well got to do something, Fred. You've read about this Mr Ford and his people's car. If he floods us, we're done for. I know you think that the aristocracy will always reign, quality will always win through and all that, but it didn't with the dynamos, Fred, and that was the Americans as well. Fred. Mr Rolls is here to see you, Uncle. Oh, my poor fellow. It's nothing, it's nothing. How are you feeling? Fine, I'm all right. There's a warning sign, apparently. I've got to rest and eat. Both terrible wastes of time. Hot? And not enough petrol get into the carburetor. <laughs> Overwork? Uh, no, 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 nothing like that. Oh, uh, tell, tell Eric Platford there was no wrong with this but a loose spring. Hide it under your coat, eh, on the way out. Mrs. Royce doesn't come in here. If she can't bear illness or anything unpleasant. CJ has drawn up some amalgamation papers, I believe. Yes. Yes, good. Oh, I brought you this. A flute? It's a sort of recorder. I made it. Did you really? Well, we'll try it, I mean, if it won't strain your heart. Disgrace! Absolutely bleeding scandalous! Bugger off! Go on, shut up! Get your money and bugger off out of my works! Work back to normal. Amalgamation papers for the Board of Trade. C.S. Rolls and Company and Royce Limited are to be wound up, and their assets will be taken over by the new company. I see uh, Mr. Ford's coming over from the States for a visit. It doesn't worry us. Hmm. And uh, Charlie Jarrett set up a new record from Monte Carlo to London. Speed record, I mean. I see you've raised Owen's wages. Oh, you couldn't cope. Four pounds a week isn't much for a mechanic. three pounds, twelve and sixpence. What was Jarrett's time? About 36 hours, I believe. Would that suit you? I mean, publicity? You mean, if you were to... Fred. 
Yes? You're a fool, man. What do you want? Your wife to see you. Hey? Eh? I've been here. You killed yourself. You should never have gone back to work so soon. And Ernest Claremont says he comes in here at 5.30 in the morning to unlock and there you'll be lying asleep over some piece of machinery or other. I'm sorry I haven't sent you word, but... If you'd wanted me. But of course I want you. Of course I want you at home with me. A lot of good it does me when I am. I have a great love for you, Frederick. I've grown used to the terrible hours you work. I've had ten years of it. But at least you came home sometimes. What is it that's so absorbing this time? Oh, it's a new chassis. Something special. Shall I... Would you like the telephone put in? Oh, Fred. Well, we can cope, and then you could phone me from home. You won't have to walk to the post office or... What's been happening at home? Jim Sanderson's won the choir boys' competition. Oh, good. Violet was very disobedient. I had to stand her in the corner with her dolls. A girl of 18? As a punishment, Fred. Do you think I did wrong? Well, No, that... no. You see, I'm so afraid you'll leave me. You will leave me just like Ernest Claremont left my sister. And, and that Mr. Johnson, whom I thought was so nice, left his wife. And... Don't be foolish. Well, I'm not much good to you, am I? What's the point? No, I meant... <gasps> You see, what, what good is that to a man? It's your hands, they're always dirty. If I was sick again. Oh, no. Oh, don't talk about that. You must go to see Dr. Campbell Thompson, but I, I don't want to know what he says. If I was sick again, would you look after me? You know, I'd do anything for you, Fred. I'd do anything except that sort of thing. Please don't ask. Three years my firm's been living hand to mouth. If we don't win out now, you're going to see one hell of a lot of me. Well, I pray to God that may be so, Frederick. You see, the dreadful thing about all this is that these motor cars seem honestly to matter to you more than anything else in the world, even your own happiness. Look at you all. All broken marriages, all of you, including ours. Oh. No, including us, Fred, please. Please, let's be honest for once. But what is it? Is it really so important? It is to me. I'm sorry, I must get the works book. It's all right, we'd finished. Excuse me. I'll try and come home tonight. Why did you leave your wife, Ernest? She couldn't make toast. Toast? She always burnt it. Used to drive me mad.
saw Mr. Johnson sticking a coin in this, sir. What? The six cylinders. He's having all the body work done in silver and calling it a silver ghost. Those sales lovers are as mad as hatters. Don't do that! What's this? Well, I had to make it up an alloy, sir. Uh, we couldn't afford nickel steel. I thought Mr. Claremont told you. Oh, what's the point? Why should I slave my guts out? Go on, get out. Yeah, but... Did I tell you to make it up an alloy? Go on, get your money and get out of my bloody works. Fred, look, he's done it. Clip two minutes off Charlie Jarrett's record. And how much did that cost? What? 300 pounds? 300? He pours money away like water while we... And look at this ballooning of his. That must cost a fortune. Oh, he does. £3,000 a year. And he's always crying poor. Whenever I talk to him, he's always oh, that's saying... that's not his personal money. Thought you realised that. That's his company's money. Is it? Is it the company's money? My company's? I fail to see your interest. I can't afford the proper tools for the job. I can't afford the proper materials for the new model or decent security for my men. Your company can't. We're as dependent on each other as if we're Siamese twins, you know that. Nonsense. If you go bust, we do too. Claremont knows it, Johnson it's knows my it. my money, good God, I've capitalised my income and sunk it into all this. Why shouldn't I do what I think is necessary? Because too many people depend on you, that's why. Because you do it for a lark. It's all the rage among your set, the balloonatics. Why, you can't even control the things. I do it because our future is up there. Balloons? Aircraft of some sort, something in the air! You and your set think nothing of taking a whole gasometer to fill one of those things. You deprive an entire town of its cooking and lighting for half the weekend. Have you seen? Have you read what the Wright brothers have done in the United States? After four years of experiment, they have built a flying machine 40 feet wide with two wings and an engine. And they fly in it and control it. They catapult it along a wooden rail, up into the air. They can make it circle, bank, make figures of eight, fly for half an hour at almost 40 miles an hour. Think of it! That's our future. That's the next logical step. Aircraft. And that means meticulous preparation now in balloons. We must find our way about the skies as we've already done on land. These, these will be obsolete in a few years. People will be going to work by flying machine. But we haven't perfected these yet. The whole world is buckling and changing its shape while we look at it. We've got to keep up, keep abreast of what's happening. There's no time to perfect everything anymore before you pass on. That's Victorian. Victorian? What do you mean? Victorian? What's that supposed to mean? Don't you realize they have petrol engines? Eh? The flying machines work on petrol. And the problem that held them up for so long was getting an, an engine light enough to be practicable. Precisely the problem that you solved with the light 20. You're not... You're not suggesting... Think of it! To be able to reach almost any part of the Empire in a few hours, the king will be cock Are you seriously suggesting we should go in for these string and paper contraptions? We should do more than that. We should plan to drop these altogether. It's lucky I know you. I was never more serious in my life. As you were with the bicycle, then the motor car, then ballooning. Now, aircraft. None of them mastered. Just hop, hop from one to the next. Amateur, dilettante. The same thing when you tire of flying machines. What'll it be then? Rockets? Rockets. No, forget that. I didn't say that. What about my men? And all the others depending on you, eh? We've got to expand. Terrifying gamble though it is. I know that! God knows where the money's coming from, but we've got to go public and open the new factory at Derby. New factory? No. We're bursting at the elbows. We can't output fast enough, and you're taking off all the working capital. And for what? Always a plot, aren't you? The copier. Just look at the features on these machines of yours. They're dull. They're dull. They're safe, and they're dull. I design cars that are robust, trouble-free, long-lived, smooth-running, and silent. And that's something I'm not ashamed of. Not one of these features is original. Not one. They're all copied from... Adapted. Adapted. Then. Adapted and improved upon. I never claimed anything else. You've I'm no a mechanic. There, you've no real style. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. You ought to be at home in bed. You heard about Johnson? And his wife? Yes, yes, I have. I came in here. He was crying. 
I'm all right. Let me take you up in a balloon. Never in a thousand years. Up in the sky, out of control. The only fatality ever recorded... Now, fatality, yes. The only fatality ever recorded was when a balloon came down in the Pyrenees and the balloonists were eaten by wolves. Well, yes, that would be it. Well, you don't get wolves with a motor car. You must drop all that if we are to survive. I mean, the ballooning and the flying and the racing. The racing's not important. Concentrate everything on the car, you and I. You've heard of Mr. Ford's success. Mass production, everything we abhor. You don't make the finest car in the world by dabbling at it. We're not there yet, but we could do it. Drop all that other stuff. What are you carrying that thing around for? Put the electrical light on. So glad you've come back. Did I wake you? No, I just felt you here. How's Vi? She's been very disobedient. What is it? You didn't want me to tell you to see the doctor. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, it's not that. Ernest Claremont came here looking for you. They've got Mr. Briggs to put up the rest of the money. The money you needed for the move to Derby. Mr. Briggs has written a check. Doesn't that cheer you? No. Three o'clock. Are you coming upstairs? No. What? I'll stay down here tonight. Start at Douglas, then to Peel, Balloff, Solby, Ramsey, over Snaefell, back to Douglas. 161 miles, and they do it four times round. Fuel is rationed to one gallon per 22.54 miles, and the course goes up to 1,365 feet and down to sea level. And the gradient goes up to one in seven. First lap. Captain Northy has abandoned the race with a broken spring. Spring broken, heart broken. Mr. Rose is lying second. Lap time one hour, two seconds, the fastest recorded. Oh. <laughs> Lap 
two, rolls in the lead. Whoa. One hour, 57 seconds lap time. End of lap three, rolls 20 minutes in the lead. If he brings this off, we're made. He's going to run out of petrol. Or break a spring, too. Can I have a cigarette? Of course. You don't smoke. I do now. Hey! Hey! Another! Another set! He's won. <gasps> That's cars. speeches <laughs> no, but I will say this you can have the rest of the day off <laughs> with pay <laughs> I'm leaving celebrations to you, off to Paris for the Gordon Bennett balloon race. Nearly done. Aye. Best car in the world. Unlike you. Eh? I'm not boasting. I say it as a fact. We'll really be moving to Derby to be near the new works. Aye. But not Min. No? No, she'll be staying here. Sunday night, it rose quite out of sight, and they found it next day on a spire. How's the 4050 getting on, Prince? Ready for trial in a fortnight. Are you pleased? No. Fancy title you thought up for it. The king likes it. Who? Oh, the king. Well, I mentioned it to him. You know, he's uh, agreed to become patron of the Automobile Club. Gentlemen. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Mr. Rolls is unable to be with us at this first meeting of the Board of Rolls-Royce Liberty, uh, which was yesterday registered at the Board of Trade. However, he has written to me as chairman. He asks if the board would lighten some of his duties. He's not resigning. No, no. Couldn't give up his salary. He still wants his seat. He wishes to be relieved of demonstrating the motor, giving driving lessons and dealing with the press. But to remain technical managing director. And he's cutting his salary accordingly, of course. Oh, I don't think there's any need for that. Of course not. Well? Well, I think we have to agree, if that's what he wants. Apart from the loyalty we owe him... The I... what? Apart from that, I say he's too valuable an asset. I mean his name. No one's indispensable. I think everyone is for agreeing to this request. Very well. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. 
Chairman, uh, uh, before we go any further, I have an important matter to raise. If, after its trials, the promise of the Silver Ghost is realised, and it proves to be the ultimate refinement of all that Mr Royce and Mr Rolls have worked at these many years, then I propose we drop all other models and make only these. Beautiful. Quite the most elegant motor I've ever seen. It goes, too. Oh, yes. Yes, naturally. It's a dickens of a plan, dropping all other models. Biggest gamble so far. When have we ever played safe? I've arranged a 15,000-mile test under observed conditions. 15,000? Longer than ever before, yes. And we'll do it non-stop, day and night. The engine will never be switched off. It'll fill the motoring press for weeks. Where? The test? London to Edinburgh, Edinburgh to London, and so on. The shuttle. Who's going to do it? There's only one name will really make the news. Beneath him now, isn't it? Will you ask him? Me? It would come back down. All right. He's at his church in Kent, teaching himself to fly. You must come and see the new tailpiece I put on my short right. Works beautifully. The what? A short right biplane. I've flown almost half a mile in it, you know. Once with a pig. A what? A pig. I took a pig up with me. You know that old saying about pigs not being able to fly? They have now. <laughs> Wilbur Wright's flown 74 miles, you know. With a pig? He came to stay with me in town. Monsieur Blériot, too. You know? The man who flew the channel last year. Even you must have heard of him. Yes. I'm going to fly the channel myself this summer. What? Both ways. There and back. No one's ever done that before. Well? We want to put the Silver Ghost through a 15,000 mile test. Will you drive it? I haven't got the time. Well, share it then. Do part of it. A rotor. It's the last thing. Total cost of replacement parts to bring this motor back to as new condition. Two pounds, two shillings and sevenpence. Where's Rolls? Rolls should be here. Well, I think we must all congratulate Rolls on his tremendous achievement, a double crossing of the channel. Indeed. Not every day that one finds oneself on the same board as a national hero yeah, yeah. who receives congratulatory telegrams from the king. Oh. Yes. Yes, that was Johnny Deason of it. I hear they're displaying you at Madame Tussauds. Yes. That's because I'm the only Englishman known to have taken ten gallons of petrol in and out of France without paying duty on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so actually it's a terrible likeness. Have you seen it? No. Horrible, you know. Could we now take item number three on the agenda, Mr Chairman? Mr. Rolls using the Lily Hall works to manufacture parts of an airship. Airship? Yes, it's in the agenda. I didn't get one. It's still there. Perhaps Mr. Rolls will tell us about it. 
Yes, I made drive shaft and casings for Colonel Kappa's airship. Why shouldn't I? Under contract, he paid you. Certainly. You should not accept outside contracts without the consent of the board. Damn it! It's my works! It's the London service station of Rolls-Royce Limited of Derby. That's how to resign as technical managing director of this company. Good idea. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, remain on the board. Yes. I think this news should not be made known outside this room. The company is public face. Quite so. Quite so. Well, then, if you'll excuse me, uh, the rest of the meeting. There's no point. I have a flying display at Bournemouth. Great deal of preparation to be done. Sales report. Since the last board meeting, 53 silver ghosts have been sold. Customers include four members of foreign princely houses, two dukes, two earls, a viscount, seven British barons, 15 foreign ones, four baronets, and two high court judges. Oh, and Mrs. Pankhurst. <laughs> <clears throat> We're now producing four ghosts a week, retailing at 985 pounds. I think that is satisfactory. For our motors, certainly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ford has also adopted a one-model policy, a Model T. He's producing 200 a week. Need that worry us. It's the beginning of the end, whether you like it or not. We're aiming to produce 15 million cheap cars. Motoring will become a hell. That's the thing about golden ages. They're over before you realize they've started. And it's all a lark to him. Rolls? What does he care with his flying? He's got money, position, looks, the world before him. And he's got what I envy most, and never shall have. You or I neither, Johnson. And that's style. I mean, real style. A golden boy of a golden age. Mean as hell, though. Fragile. That's what I find about him. Eh? Something fragile. Lovely to see you. I didn't know. What a surprise. Auntie not in? No, she's in the vestry, but she'll be back for tea. You are nice. I do love you. Hey, hey that's enough. Good gracious me. Oh, I forgot. There's a telegram for you. We were going to send it on, but the boy didn't wait. Here. First aviator to be killed flying in England. He would have appreciated that. You weren't there? I was in London. His machine fell from only 60 feet up. Concussion of the brain. It's a good time to die, Royce, even at 32. With our dear King dead, so much is already changing. But he couldn't have gone on, you know, not with income tax at one and tuppence in the pound. Do you know there wasn't a mark on him? Man, you're not crying, are you? No. Company shares have dropped threepence, you know. I must speak to the newspaper reporter before they leave. I think, as shareholders, we should make it perfectly plain that the affairs of Rolls Royce Limited will remain unaffected. <laughs> 